Ophelia. Dalgan again. Scored with four players forward. A good tackle by Des Bremner. Here's Tony Morley. The two front players looking for positions and it's going to come to Colin Gibson and Geddes on the far post is unmarked and Graham Roberts intercepted. Otherwise, a certain goal for Aston Villa. David Geddes was just waiting to snap up the cross. temperatures have been rising a little bit these last few minutes and the referee having a word with Tony Morley who I think was possibly booked for descent with Ray Clements didn't make the cross And Villa's player of the year last season, Big Peter with puts them in front. There's Clements going up, got confused with his own defender, and with put the ball in. Poor Ray Clements, most unfortunate. But for Peter with the sort of goal that centre forwards thrive on. When it drops like that, there it goes in the back of the net. Archibald, Ardiles, Falco, good play, oh what a great goal by Mark Falco. Magnificent build up by Tottenham and what a devastating finish. He's changed his gloves a couple of times Jimmy Rimmer. Here's uh, Archibald for Spurs. It's a somewhat risky ball, but Chris Hewton got it by courtesy of Peter Wood. Nobody to his right at all. But there were three players to his left, and one of them is Galvin. Away by McNaught. Here's Hewton. Oh, Falco missed his kick. And Hoddle. To Galvin. Falco scores again! Well, what a match he's having. Here's Evans. And there goes Geddes. And that's where Clements is going to give Tottenham something, I fancy. His ability to come out and patrol that area behind the back four, where he likes to be very much in charge. There's Andy Blair. It's going to come to Tony Morley. And there's Wick coming in. And that's gone in. And again, the cross beats Ray Clements. And again, Peter Wick puts the ball in the net. And Aston Villa are level after 52 minutes. Some very good work initially by Colin Gibson. And Ray Clements is injured. The cross finally came in from Tony Morley. And Peter with coming in behind David Geddes here as Clements missed his punch. And in fairness to Peter with Clements was already beaten before he was injured. Falco. Good turn by Mark Falco. And Jimmy Rimmer gets down very well to that sort of shot. It's one of his... Uh, specialist pieces of goalkeeping is positioning when a player is coming in on goal he was in absolutely the right place and he made the save look a great deal easier than perhaps it might have been Falco coming in there finding space for the shot but look where Rimmer is
Geddes. Cowens. And there's one for Clements. To turn against the bar and over from Des Bremner. And he's uh, smiling his way through it, Ray Clements, but he's having one of those days. Really teasing ball, that. And as uh, David Geddes comes in, Clements turns it against the bar. So there you are. Charity Shield is shared between Aston Villa, the league champions, and Tottenham Hotspur, the holders of the FA. Tottenham, it's our dealers. Ready on again for his fellow countrymen. And a little thick line and a good one there for Perryman, who'd come forward quickly for Tottenham. Outside him is Roberts. Here's Ricky Villier again. Played there. Oh! And Archibald! Well, if there are any doubts about Archibald's fitness before the game, there was none in terms of his quick thinking and getting in there to put Spurs in the lead. Perriman playing the ball in there to Velia, who did well here, and so too did uh, Ardiles, number seven, with that shot there, well saved, in fact, by Corrigan at full length. Before he could get to it, Archibald was in there, and Spurs were in the lead, 1-0. Hutchison just kept in play expertly the crowd gave him applause for that which it certainly deserved there's Gow again a really competitive midfielder now Mackenzie will be very nearly found uh, Boyer with that one here's Gow again and City have got a lot of people forward Boyer 1-1 his first goal for his new club and so typical of the man and the man who bought him, John Bond, I would have thought, well, that's repaid something. And it was a really beautiful header. Jerry Gow, who's done so much in the midfield for Manchester City since he joined them from Bristol City. And a really good, powerful header by Boyer. And that's 1-1. One, one. And here's Hoddle again. And he's done it again! so far but not really by his standards been all that impressive my word he hit that one it deflected off the line into the roof of the net but it's Glenn Hoddle's goal getting the right sort of angle there just flicking off the defender Bobby MacDonald but it's 2-1 to Tottenham Hoddle again Suddenly sprung to life with that goal and then with a shot that wasn't far off the mark and hit with great power. Archibald playing it into him there. Economy of effort, but a great deal of power. Now going in there, it was uh, Archibald who got it away, not very far though. Hollow nicking it on. And now a chance. There are two up. Velia is supported by Crooks on this side. Velia going all the way. No Crooks. The linesman's flagging and it's offside. Surprise on the face of Garth Crooks, and there couldn't have been much in it. The linesman was right up there. And yes, it looks very much as though the linesman was 100% right. The obstruction there on Tommy Hutchison, another free kick for Manchester City. But there's not time to take it. And Spurs, with that goal from Glenn Hoddle, 15 minutes from the end, get what could be a very valuable victory and put an end to a run of four successive defeats. With Archibald having scored for Spurs in the first half, Phil Boyer equalising for Manchester City, Glenn Hoddle getting the winner, Keith Birkinshaw goes off with a good deal of relief, and a final score here at White Hart Lane is Tottenham Hotspur 2, Manchester City 1. Hoddle in the centre forward position here. The others are to his left at the moment, apart from Perryman. Here comes Crooks. It's Crooks! It's there! Garth Crooks for Spurs! Hesitation in the defence! That's Glenn Hoddle. Oh, Crooks is going through here. Oh, he's outpaced them! Crooks is there! Oh, yes! Number 10!
two for Crooks, number two for Tottenham, and a magnificent ball by Glenn Hoddle. Here's Velia. Velia shot. Oh! 3-0, and Ricky Velia produces another marvellous moment for Spurs. Absolutely vintage stuff. And that one came straight out of Argentina. And now the players learn that Keith Birkinshaw is leaving at the end of that season. They are determined to give him a European triumph to take with him. But it's a tough semi-final assignment against Hajduk Split with the first leg in Yugoslavia. Well, that bizarre penalty means Spurs need a solitary goal at White Hart Lane to reach the final, and Mickey Hazard saw that they got it. Graham Roberts is forward. Galvin to take it. Swinging in towards Paul Miller. Heels for handball. Number four, Ivan Gudeli. Protesting about the decision, but it's been given. Perryman and Hazard, the Tottenham players, round the ball. Miller and Roberts are both forward. And Hazard goes for goal. Oh, yes! Spurs in front. Nick Hazard. And look how he proved how worthwhile it was, all that treatment. He found the corner of the net from the free kick. And he's gone straight off down the dressing room as though he's got a problem. And whatever the advantages of the early goal for Tottenham, this tie by no means over. And Prakazi hit that. Oh, and Tony Box, goodness me, and Bujovic in on him. Tottenham with their hearts in their mouths there. And Tony Parks with the ball in his hands at the end. But oh dear me, only just Prakazi hit it. And Parks lost it. Up against the bar it went. And he grabbed it on its way down, but only just. Thomas. Archibald wants it played long. Falco. And Archibald surely. Simovic saves very well from his point of view. Here's Galvin. It's a good cross, and again the goalkeeper. Keith Birkinshaw on the bench knows how close it is now. We're in stoppage time. And there it is in his last season. He sees Spurs go to their fourth cup final in four years. It's a final against Anderlecht of Belgium. The first leg in Brussels. And more and more, it's becoming a crusade for Keith Birkinshaw. His reign about to end after eight honourable years, and now every Spurs fan and player praying that it will end in time. For which Lacey and Roberts are making their way forward. Lacey! That's his second timely effort but it found Tony Coton standing in just the right place. A bit of holding there. The referee decides it was more by Harford than by Perryman. kick driven forward on by Mavitz here he is again Mavitz six 
69 minutes gone, and a splendid volley by Gary Mabbott. Fans in the new stand on their feet, because you don't see many shots struck better than that. Glenn Hoddle, a specialist in volleying the ball, but Gary Mabbott has shown for Spurs and England that he can strike them as well, and that one just flew in the left-hand side of Tony Coton. A brilliant goal by Mabbott, pushed forward today to play in Archibald's position. Unlucky in the first half when he hit the bar, but on that occasion, he hit the back of the net. And what a versatile young man he is. Back four, midfield, centre forward, and he always seems to have some effect on the game. Not always as startling as that, but here's Gary Brook. the referee's nose if he wants to stop the game he lets Spurs have the advantage Crooks to Brook and Brook hits one what a fine save by Tony Coton Gary Brook himself a specialist in the powerful drive from distance but Tony Coton got that one away Birmingham are going to make a substitution any minute now question of Ian Handicides attracting the attention of the referee he'll have to wait Glenn Hoddle with the corner oh well I think the the loudspeaker has almost made the referee's mind up for him it stopped the game and off goes Mick Ferguson and on comes Ian Handicides Spurs. Perryman. Hazard. And Brook. And Crooks couldn't make it. Against a very determined Noel Blake. Oh, and that was uh, Lacey clattering in. Oh, Birmingham now in the position where they've got to take a few risks. And decides. Dylan. Ben Holland picking up the Ray Clements throw. Spreading the play wide to Hooten. Intentions of Galvin were read well by Hagen, who's done very nicely against him today, but will be penalised there. Certainly hasn't allowed Galvin too much scope, Jim Hagen, but concedes the free kick. Ten minutes left, Spurs one up. It was a free kick that produced that goal indirectly. This one is rather nearer to the 18-yard line, and Lacey and Mabbott are waiting for Hoddle to cross. And the header away, coming from Dennis, so it's a corner. And they work it back again to Galvin. And Lacey will get a touch here. And Mavet does, Crooks offside. Offside won't count. Lacey got the first touch, Mavet got the second, but Crooks offside as he put the ball in the net. the power behind the throne now at White Hart Lane Douglas Alexiou the new chairman in the Spurs scarf and Irving Scholar next to him who masterminded the takeover well won again by Roberts on by Hoddle to Brook and now Mabbott to Crooks and back to Mabbott what a brilliant move oh is it going in Mabbott what a brilliant move by Spurs little Rick 
Ricochet at the end favoured them, but they deserved that. The interchange from the minute Roberts first touched the ball was superb. Hoddle, Crooks involved. Crooks jabbed it forward, past the goalkeeper it went, and Mabbott ran it in. Seven minutes from the end, number two for Tottenham and number two for Gary Mabbott. sides for Birmingham. Oh, and off Clements, and here comes David Langan, and a goal pulled back four minutes from the end. The break initially was by handy sides, the substitute, the shot coming back off the body of Ray Clements, and David Langan, on his return to the Birmingham side, scores his second goal of the season. The other one was a penalty. They've worked hard. They kept Tottenham at bay until 20 minutes from the end. Went two behind, but at least they've had a say now, Birmingham City. Three points for Spurs. And put this man where you like, he always seems to have an effect on the game. Two goals earlier this season for the under-21s from right-back Gary Mabbott. Two goals in midfield here against Forest, I remember. Two goals today as a striker in place of Steve Archibald. A true, versatile player. The first goal volleyed venomously. The second, a lovely build-up. Birmingham got one back, but they're still in relegation trouble despite David Langan's late effort. And Spurs win by two. By the penalty spot there. Huddle has ever to take. And it was Roberts's header. Why Duxbury headed it, I don't know. Neither I imagine would he. And it ends up with a goal scored by Hazard. Hazard continues the goal-scoring sequence. Scored, you may remember, at Old Trafford in the second leg of the League Cup. Got a hat-trick last week in Tel Aviv and opens the scoring with a deflection here. But really, an awful mistake by young Mike Duxbury, who had no need to head the ball out, and it set up the opportunity for Hazard. Brian Robson, a good game on Wednesday. Might indeed be argued that Robson has been England's most uh, consistent player during their recent disappointing spell. Bakken. Wilkins, every Spurs player behind the ball, and here's Stapleton, and here's Moses. Well, I'm not quite sure how close Glenn Hoddle got to him, but it seemed to be enough to force Moses to lean back and put the shot fairly skyward. And you can see as Wilkins plays it through. It's a moment then when United have got a player behind the defence, and there's a bit of space here for Moses. Huddle stretches, and he was a long way away, but the shot was a disappointing one. Tottenham with four forward, the extra man being Hazard. Huddle. Oh, look at that. Crooks. Oh, 
done it deserved better. But he says that he's uh, choosing the moment to make the passes now, and sometimes when you go for the more difficult ones, they can be cut out. But both the weight of that and the appreciation of where Crooks was was absolutely super. and starts the run. Bertels goes with him. So Hoddle goes the other way. To Hewton. To Crooks. Nice turn. And really, Hewton and Galvin then were a bit too close together. But Spurs got a corner for the move. Way back to Hewton, United's defenders moving forward. Hazard, Hewton, cut out by Robson. Galvin changes the angle to Ardiles. And they swap again. And it was Alderson's head which got there before that of Miller. Archibald in the six-yard box, Roberts behind it. Oh, he might get a free header and does! <laughs> well, the crowd showed their appreciation. And I think Roberts is entitled to show his, both to Huddle for the accuracy of the kick and to Manchester United defenders for their appalling marking. He stood on the edge of the six-yard box as the corner was hit and had an absolute free header, which he promptly buried. So, 30 minutes gone, Spurs two goals to the good. And uh, record of being the only side in the first division, yet to draw a match is looking pretty safe. square now and so is Huddle and he fainted beautifully Perman shot and finally Galvin's wouldn't have counted but a good save by Roach wouldn't have counted because an offside decision has been given but Roach did very well then Tony Galvin certainly looking at the opportunity with Roach a bit far forward but the Irish goalkeeper got back very well for a good tip over. Miss Wilkins well forward. And I think the foul by Perriman came in slightly from behind and got a bit of a barge in the back of Sammy McElroy. Sam McElroy, who came first into the Manchester United team ten years ago this month in the Manchester derby. Wilkins takes the kick. Here's Bertels. And he got it at the second time. 
But what a curious goal. Because if truth be told, Vettels missed the first opportunity, but he didn't control the ball. And then as both Miller and Roberts came to him, he manages to get it up over them and over the advancing keeper. There's where he missed his chance, and now it's up over the two of them. And uh, a wink to a colleague, a score of 2-1, and Bertel's sixth goal of the current campaign. It's for three minutes of the first half remaining, maybe changes the picture a bit. Brooks, Ardiles, Roberts, and United support making themselves heard, Archibald, too many cooks. Alberston who had made the run offside. And after his considerable drought, which went on for a year, Gary Berthels has now scored in the last three matches. <laughs> so we reach half-time with three goals on the sheet, which will please the match of the day team, but I wonder which manager will be more irritated. Hazard scoring first for Spurs, Roberts getting the second, both of them, I'm sure Ron Atkinson will feel with defensive errors, Maybe Keith Birkenshaw won't be too happy about the fact that Gary Berthels was allowed to bring United back into the game. And the passes of that first half, two memorable ones from Van Hoddle. Half-time score, Spurs 2, United 1. The half-time has brought further problems for Manchester United. Jimmy Nicholl has had to come on. Martin Bucken, the player he replaces, because Bucken has hamstring problems. So Duxbury now playing at the centre of the defence. Check for Mr. Schapter. And Spurs now attacking the goal to our left, behind which are most of the Manchester United supporters. It's Roberts, whose goal at the moment divides the teams. Brooks. Huddle. That's for Archibald, and that's a great ball. And Roach did well. getting a touch so with 54 minutes gone Tottenham once again have the breathing space they had for all but the last three minutes of the first half since then United have threatened them but now the gap is back to two goals play by Huddle and the free kick given for the Posse of challenges made on him. And Archibald, doubtless still enjoying his moment. Crooks. Well, United moving up so comfortably then to get the offside decision. Well, 
corruption. is out court himself. Spurs aren't getting the front men away as often as they would like. Lovely piece of play by Fairman, and here's a lot of space for Crooks. He can come inside on his own. The skipper turning defence into a track with a good piece of improvisation and great thinking. Brooks unable to match the finish that we saw earlier from Archibald. Dalvin has gone to take the corner. Archibald coming up ahead of uh, Paddy Roach. Miller coming as well, so is Huddle. Archibald! And he got down well. Header down from Huddle. The flick from Archibald. Darwin's corner. Miller made the run. Huddle headed downwards, and that little flick came off defender and forward. And Roach got down well. Defender, in fact, was Stapleton. That's a good ball by Hazard. And here's Archibald. And still, if he can balance himself. And Huddle. <laughs> Not one of the memorable ones, sadly, for him. Huddle. Uh, everything left of him. Moran to take on. Archibald. Lovely piece of play then because he was moving one way, Huddle, as he played the pass the other. And I think most of the applause is for the number 10. Crooks, Ardiles, presented with Ball and Wilkins at the same time. Duxbury. Three in the middle. Oh, I say. Ray Clement showing supreme uh, confidence as to where the ball was going. I'm not sure that one or two of those ahead of him were quite as assured. Crooks the chase, but I don't think he'll make it. But Archibald's going to mark the goalkeeper. Forcing the turn. And forcing the ball being given away. A foul by Hazard, says Mr. Chapter, who was absolutely square of the incident. Nickel. challenging it was very nearly destroyed by the England man just couldn't get the nick then it was a good try by Robson much of all but wasn't very happy about the referee's decision neither was our dealers and shot between Miller and Stapleton. Bertels. Nico did well. And Stapleton... Very good flick on by Moran. Nobody 
Everybody knows better than Frank Stapleton that that was guilt edged. in the middle, Galvin just behind, taking over and losing. <laughs> Brian Robson, Huddle, he was pulled a bit, but here's Crooks! <laughs> and in spite of being pulled, Huddle put Crooks right in then, but he took his time, and that time allowed Alveston to come across. <laughs> Offside. <laughs> Referee has watch in hand, whistle in mouth. United have become three-time losers for Tottenham this season, twice in the League Cup and now in the league, with Archibald scoring a memorable goal in the second half, and Glenn Hoddle contributing greatly to the end of Manchester United's run, which had gone 11 games without defeat. And the appreciation of the crowd showing clearly that they have enjoyed the afternoon, and indeed, so have we. Spurs bringing their waveform to White Hart Lane and ending with a 3-1 victory. Alfie Conn with the flick, it found Taylor, and Taylor went through and scored! That was Moores again, there's Young, and Taylor! Well, back to Hartford. Hartford again. Jennings to Kidd. And Young might have been a little bit lucky to get that, but get it he did. So Royal chased back. Good play that by Royal, and it could be on for the through ball. Is he offside? Power? No, he's not. The flag stayed down, and Paul Power has made it 2-2, and Tottenham were caught scoring.